These are the headlines we're following at this hour. The record torrential rain now brings the nationwide tally of deaths and missing persons to 50. Amid the rescue and recovery efforts, an investigation also begins into the deaths at a flooded underpass in Oslo. South Korea and the U.S. will kick off their nuclear consultative group to counter North Korean threats with the first session here in Seoul. Russia has suspended the Black Sea grain deal that allowed Ukraine's exports of grain. Ukraine's president says the deal remains in effect without Russia. Good afternoon. Rescue and recovery operations continue here in South Korea after extreme rainfall swept across the nation's central and southern regions. The number of people either dead or missing now stands at 50. Meanwhile, authorities have begun investigating into the cause of the daily flooding in an underpass in Ozong. Our Shin Ayang starts us off. Torrential rainfall during this year's monsoon season has resulted in lost lives and damage to infrastructure. According to the latest data from the Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasures Headquarters, as of 6 a.m. Tuesday, nationwide, 41 people have died and nine are still missing as a result of the recent weather. In addition, 35 people have been injured while over 12,000 have evacuated their homes for safety and the monsoon season is not over yet. At the site of the flooded underpass in Ozong in Cheongju City, Chungcheongbukdo Province, one more body was recovered, bringing the death toll from that flash flood event rising to at least 14 at 8.10 p.m. on Monday. Search and rescue efforts inside the tunnel came to an end on Monday night. However, considering that the most recently recovered body was found in a grassy area near the tunnel, the authorities plan to continue the search outside the tunnel, such as along riverbank and in fields. The Office for Government Policy Coordination announced on Monday that they have started an investigation to determine the cause of the tragic incident in Ozong. Authorities confirmed that one to two hours before the tragedy took place, there were two emergency calls to 112 requesting the emergency evacuation of residents and emergency control of the underground tunnel. Landslides have also been a cause for concern during this monsoon season, with seven related deaths in total recorded in Gyeongsangbuk-do province, while three died in Chungcheongnam-do province due to landslides. Nationwide, 195 landslides were reported between July 6 and July 17, mainly in Chungcheongnam-do, Jeollabuk-do, and Gyeongsangbuk-do provinces. Over 230 houses have been destroyed or submerged, and more than 740 public facilities, including roads and bridges, have been damaged. Agricultural damage is also severe, with over 26,000 hectares of farmland flooded. Shin Ayong, Arirang News. And this just in, among the nine missing, one more body was recovered from Yecheonggung County, Gyeongsangbuk-do province. Meanwhile, President Yoon seung yeol said he will put a stop to the misuse of government subsidies and use those funds to help with the recovery efforts from the recent flooding, emphasizing disaster relief is a priority for taxpayers' money. Speaking at a cabinet meeting on Tuesday, the president said available resources will be utilized for a speedy recovery, including through the designation of special disaster zones. He also called for the nation's disaster management system to be completely overhauled with extreme weather now the norm and set a new structured digital monitoring system is on its way. And the president also shared details of his overseas trip last week and emphasized the importance of security cooperation between Europe and Asia. He said his participation at the NATO summit helped solidify cooperation between South Korea and NATO as well as with Ukraine in their rebuilding efforts. Seoul and Washington's commitment to extended deterrence against North Korea continues to take shape with their first session of the nuclear consulted group set to take place here in Seoul. Our top of his correspondent, Oh Soo Young, has more. South Korea and the United States are launching their bilateral dialogue platform to coordinate nuclear responses to North Korea's growing security threat. On Tuesday, President Yoon Seo-go spoke at the inaugural meeting of the Nuclear Consultative Group in Seoul, with the first quarterly session to address information sharing, consultation mechanisms, joint planning and execution of nuclear deterrence against North Korea. 
핵협의 그룹 회의는 강력하고 실효적인 한미 확장 억제를 구축하는 중요한 출발점이 될 것입니다. 핵 기반의 새로운 패러다임으로 업그레이드된 한미 동맹을 통해 북한의 핵과 미사일 위협을 원천적으로 봉쇄하기 위한 실체적인 노력들을 전개해 나갈 것입니다. The NCG was formed as part of President Yoon and Joe Biden's Washington Declaration in April, after North Korea launched an unprecedented number of missile tests last year, and experts warned that a seventh nuclear test could be imminent. Amid growing concern over the North's fast-evolving capabilities, and with recent public opinion surveys finding over 70% feel the need for South Korea to develop its own nuclear weapons, Seoul and Washington agreed in April to bolster their joint capabilities and confidence in executing the U.S. extended deterrence policy of defending allies who fall under conventional or nuclear attack. While Seoul does not have nuclear weapons, the NCG would allow its participation in Washington's nuclear planning and operating process, differentiating the group from other dialogue bodies, such as the Extended Deterrence Strategy and Consultation Group. This could help reduce strategic gaps and response time in nuclear crises, bolstering credibility and cohesiveness between the two allies. While critics say the NCG falls short of nuclear sharing or shared control of U.S. assets, such as under NATO's own arrangement with Washington, others deem it an important window into Washington's planning and decision-making. On that note, a senior presidential official in Seoul told reporters that South Korea's involvement in NATO's military intel sharing system called BICES could provide crucial insights into its own exchange and use of information with the United States. Underscoring its importance, the NCG talks have been upgraded to the level of vice ministers, with Principal Deputy National Security Advisor Kim Tae-ho and White House Indo-Pacific Coordinator Kurt Campbell co-hosting the session on Tuesday. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News. Washington says it's open to talks with Pyongyang without any preconditions, adding that the discussions could be on any topic. According to a U.S. State Department spokesperson speaking to Yonam News Agency on the condition of anonymity on Monday, discussions could include steps that both sides could take to improve the security situation on the Korean Peninsula. The spokesperson stressed that diplomacy is the only viable path forward. The comments come after the North Korean leader's sister Kim Yo-jong said Monday that the U.S. offer to meet without any preconditions is only a trick. Russia has suspended the Black Sea grain deal that guarantees shipping routes for Ukraine to ex export its grain um, despite a wartime blockade, thus keeping global food prices stable. Ukrainian President Zelensky says the deal can still remain in effect without Russia. Yi Seung-je has more. Despite weeks of negotiations, the deal that was brokered by Turkey and the U.N. almost a year ago to allow more than 30 million tons of Ukrainian grain access to global markets officially expired on Monday. U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres shared his disappointment at Russia's decision to step away from the deal. I deeply regret the decision by the Russian Federation to terminate the implementation of the Black Sea Initiative including the withdrawal of Russian security guarantees for navigation in the northwestern part of the Black Sea. This initiative has ensured the safe passage of over 32 million metric tons of food commodities from Ukrainian ports. Despite Russia's decision not to renew the grains deal, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in a video message on Monday stressed that the deal was in agreement with Turkey and the UN, adding his belief that the agreement remains in effect and hinting that Ukraine may continue its exports despite the deal expiring. The Black Sea Grain Initiative can and should continue to operate if without Russia, then without Russia. The agreement on grain exports is an agreement with Turkey and the UN, and it remains in effect. The expiration of the deal may deal a major blow to both Ukraine and countries that rely heavily on Ukraine's grains. Ukraine is one of the world's largest grain exporters. 
As of 2021, before the Russian invasion, it was the third largest exporter of barley, fourth largest corn exporter, and fifth largest wheat exporter worldwide, with 95% of that grain moving through Black Sea ports. Speaking at the White House on the same day, National Security Council coordinator John Kirby called Russia's decision an act of aggression that will harm people all over the world. Before the deal was signed last year, global wheat and corn prices soared 56.5 percent and 15.7 percent on year respectively, heightening food shortages in low-income countries. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. The magnitude of the climate crisis is being reflected in extreme weather across the world. But some parts of the globe are grappling with severe rainfall. The other side of the world is seeing record high temperatures. Scientists warn that such extreme weather events will only become more frequent and more intense. Ian Jin has the details. More countries around the world are experiencing climate events caused by extreme weather conditions. South Korea reaches a tenth day of heavy downpours being called water bombs, which have caused flash floods. Such conditions have caused devastating landslides, flooding of underground infrastructure, and overflowing rivers as the death toll continues to rise across the country. In neighboring Japan, just over this past weekend, the country saw some 414.5 millimeters of rain, an amount over two days that was greater than over the entire month of July in previous years. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, June was the hottest June globally in the 174 years of records kept by the agency. The United States was scorched by record heat in the west and south, while the northeast was lashed by rain, causing floods, and the Midwest was choked by wildfire smoke. California's Death Valley, that's been dubbed the hottest place on Earth, reached 54 degrees Celsius on Sunday. In coping with such extreme heat and in preventing climate-related deaths, countries in the Middle East, like the United Arab Emirates, have imposed restrictions on working outdoors between 12.30 p.m. and 3 p.m. Health ministries across Europe have issued red alerts, and with temperatures reaching 40 degrees Celsius in Greece, access has been closed to several tourist destinations like the Acropolis Monument. As El Nino returns for the first time in four years, which typically increases global temperatures in the year after it develops, the World Meteorological Organization has said there is a 98 percent likelihood that at least one of the next five years and the five-year period overall will be the warmest on record. Ian Jin, Arirang News. Household debt in South Korea has risen to an alarm level. The Bank of Korea points that it is the third highest among major economies. Our Moon Aryan has the details. As of last year, the household debt to GDP ratio in South Korea was 105 percent. Among 43 major economies, this was the third largest after Switzerland and Australia, the Bank of Korea said on Monday. The BOK pointed out that the high profitability and stability of household loans, as well as insufficient regulations on them, as the causes of the increase in such debt. Financial institutions have been providing a relatively large amount in these loans compared to corporate ones, as they have lower default rates and higher profitability. According to the BOK, the impact of the increased household debt on financial stability has been limited due to the large proportion of high net income borrowers. But there are rising concerns that over the longer term, it could hinder economic growth and widen asset inequality. The financial sector can become very weak because uh, if uh, the economy slows down and many of these families can no longer pay back the debt, then some financial institutions may become insolvent. To reduce household debt, the bank said it was necessary to use macroeconomics and monetary policies that are especially focused on financial stability. It also suggested revising current loan regulations such as minimizing exceptions to the debt service ratio, or DSR. DSR was effective in limiting the growth of household debt. Mm -hmm. It wasn't completely successful in reducing household debt, mm -hmm. uh, but combination of increasing interest rates and uh, DSR ratio probably did much to keep household debt growth in check. Now, uh, it, if the government loosens up the DSR regulations and households take more loans, then there is a possibility that households will take uh, much more loans than they can afford. 
According to data from the Bank for Intentional Settlements, Seoul's DSR was 13.6 percent last year. This is the second highest among 17 major economies after Australia, indicating a greater debt repayment burden compared to income. Moon Haeryang, Arirang News. South Korea in the first half of this year recorded its highest ever exports of K-pop. Data from the Korea Customs Service on Tuesday shows that the value of K-pop album exports during the January to June period this year came to nearly 133 million U.S. dollars, of 17.1 percent from the previous year. That's an all-time high for the first half of the year. Japan was the top destination for K-pop exports followed by the U.S. showing K-pop's growing influence in the North American music market. South Korean K-pop girl group Blackpink has set yet another record on YouTube. The band's label YG Entertainment announced on Monday that the number of subscribers on Blackpink's official YouTube channel has exceeded 90 million, the most in the world. The milestone was reached seven years and a month after the channel was launched and also comes just about a year after the group hit a record 80 million subscribers last September. BTS follows in second with over 75 million and Justin Bieber third with over 71 million. Methane is a pollutant that has much stronger greenhouse effect than carbon dioxide. A significant portion of methane is emitted by cows during digestion. A South Korean research team is trying eco-friendly feed to reduce these emissions. Our Chung Eun Ju has the details. Abnormally high temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius and above were seen this year in East Asia, Western Europe and South America. South Korea has also seen unusually high temperatures. Spring flowers bloomed early due to the warmer climate, and in May, the east coast city of Gangneung saw temperatures reach 35 degrees Celsius. Global warming is causing this extreme weather. Carbon dioxide and methane are the more common greenhouse gases that cause global warming. Methane, in particular, is more potent than carbon dioxide. Although only a small amount is emitted into the air, its greenhouse effect is 80 times that of carbon dioxide. Methane has been rising at a record level for three consecutive years since 2020. As of 2022, methane concentrations have exceeded 2.5 times pre-industrial levels. The combustion of coal or LNG gas emits methane, but the amount that cows release is also huge. Cattle regurgitate and rechew their food. This is known as cut chewing. Microorganisms in the intestine produce gas during the process of decomposing food, and this is released when cows pass wind. The main component of this gas is methane. One cow emits about 280 liters of methane per day, equivalent to the daily emissions of a car. Worldwide, cows emit around a million tons a year, accounting for 18 percent of total greenhouse gas emissions. For this reason, countries worldwide, including South Korea, are making efforts to reduce methane emissions by introducing eco-friendly feed. Among the substances researched for reducing methane, the most effective is known to be the red sea plume, a species of red algae. It's known to reduce methane generation by about 80 percent. The South Korean research team plans to promote a pilot project to reduce greenhouse gas production by 10 percent through low methane feed in Jeju Island by 2030 and gradually expand it nationwide. Chong eun Arirang News. Let's take a look at what's going on in the world now. We shift our attention to Greece now, where hundreds of residents of the coastal towns near Athens were forced to flee from a wildfire on Monday. The blaze broke out in the village of Kovaras and affected nearby villages in a matter of hours. On the same day, a second fire near the capital prompted the evacuation of some 1,200 children from a summer camp alongside residents of a rehabilitation center. A third fire in a forest 30 kilometers from Athens also broke out. Firefighters, military personnel, aircraft and helicopters are currently tackling 81 fires across Greece. The wildfires have been blamed on strong winds, soaring temperatures 
and a previous dry winter that has created tinderbox conditions. Turning over to Western Australia, where a mysterious large metal cylinder has washed ashore. The object was found by local residents at Greenhead Beach over the weekend. Authorities have since confirmed that the object is not dangerous, but have asked people to stay away from it. According to experts, the copper-colored cylinder may be a fuel tank from an Indian space rocket. The cylinder is said to be around 2.5 meters wide, up to 3 meters long, and is thought to be less than 12 months old. It also appears to have sustained damage, with a large tear at the bottom. Australia's military and its space agency are among those working to confirm the object's origin and nature. And finally, a neighborhood in Florida is dealing with a number of furry invaders. As many as 100 lionhead rabbits have taken up residence in the suburbs of Fort Lauderdale. They were allegedly illegally released by a local breeder who has since moved away. But the rabbits are ill-suited for life outside in Florida, and their thick fur is not well adapted for Florida heat. Local residents are trying to raise up to 40,000 US dollars needed to bring in a rescue group that will capture, neuter, vaccinate and shelter the rabbits until they can be given proper homes. Matthew Ashley, Arirang News. Good afternoon. It's forecast to be another day of soaking downpours with heavy rain. Mountains regions on Jeju could see more than 450 millimeters of rain. The south coast could see up to 350 millimeters of massive rainfall until tomorrow. And through tonight, southern regions in the south of Gangwon-do province will see rain hammering down. Concern is on the rise as torrential rains will be dumped on already soaked regions. A heavy rain Rain warning remains in place across the south for the fifth day in a row, and violent winds are expected for the south coast and Jeju along with that heavy showers. The capital will see rain tapering off as the day goes on with an expected high of 27 degrees, about 4 degrees higher than yesterday. The south are seeing highs going down 4 to 5 degrees, lower this afternoon hovering at 27 degrees Celsius. Rain continues to drench southern regions in Jeju tomorrow, then monsoon rain returns this weekend. Well, while rain takes a break up north, sizzling heat sets in. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. And we once again bring our focus on the record torrential rate and how it is also affecting your wallet. Some 30,000 hectares of farmland have been damaged nationwide, equivalent to some 38,000 soccer fields. And that's pushing up the already high grocery prices even higher. According to the Korea Agrofisheries and Food Trade Corporation, today's prices of both spinach and lettuce are up nearly 200 percent compared to last month. Concerns rise as more rain is to come with the impact perhaps lingering into the Chuseok Thanksgiving holiday in September. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching.